Hi everybody, uh, this is uh, Bernard May and Adam de Young and uh, Happy New Year to everybody, belated Happy New Year. Uh, we're really excited to be here and talk to you about the internet marketing trends for 2013. Uh, we've got a great lineup. Uh, we're going to be going through pretty much end-to-end uh, -end internet marketing. Uh, it's going to be a national positions uh, university topic, so we'll have some action items for you along the way. Um, as we go through each area, uh, we'll be looking at uh, some of the takeaways and, um, and, and we're going to see if, uh, you know, uh, we'd love to get your comments, we'd love to get your feedback and we'd like to uh, see if you agree with us in regards to where we think the market is going this year. And there are a lot of interesting statistics that uh, we see in the marketplace, uh, email marketing, um, when uh, interviewed by a number of the top, uh, the top uh, uh, marketing and statistics companies out there, it uh, looks like email marketing, people are going to put a lot of money in this year, uh, social media marketing, uh, mobile is really hot, uh, SEO continues to be uh, a big player, and uh, I think that the big trend is uh, continuing, which is that offline marketing is coming online. And uh, I think it's going to be a great year uh, for all of us online. Looks like everybody is looking uh, to spend more money online because of how effective online is, is going to, or has been and continues to be. So uh, in the presentation today with Adam, we're going to be looking at SEO trends. We'll look at social media and content uh, trends and our projections on those paid advertising, uh, MOLO. MOLO stands for uh, mobile and local and we'll be looking at those uh, those items. Uh, conversion, reputation and then we'll look at the action plan for the year. So we're going to jump right into it. We've got so much to talk about that uh, we're going to move this along um, fairly rapidly. Um, if you have any questions along the way please just enter that into the question bar and go to meeting and we will answer those all at the end of the session. Uh, but moving uh, straight into SEO. So Adam, um, tell us more about what, what you think in regards to uh, the trends in SEO. Um, a lot of people are talking about uh, search engine optimization becoming more complex. How do you feel about that? Well, this is a big year for SEO, um, as many of our clients are, are, are seeing. Um, you know, the trends are pointing up in terms of organic search being still being a primary way to generate traffic and leads on the internet. But SEO is evolving. You know, Google search, the search algorithms are getting much more complex and sophisticated. And you know, simply put, uh, Google is much better at being able to rank websites according to authority, value, relevance, and search experience. How users are, you know, using search and using your website. So as a result, you know, this this idea of user experience is going to continue to play a bigger role in uh, search results and in SEO campaigns for your website. Um, you know, personalization is going to become more more prevalent. Um, you know, we're seeing here uh, a slide of the knowledge graph. This is just one of the many ways that Google is, you know, sort of advancing search and how people are going to find your website on the internet. Great. I mean, a lot of the what we've seen is since the Penguin algorithm came in in April, the first Penguin, Penguin 1.0, we've seen algorithm updates on a pretty consistent basis. There've been uh, Panda updates as well. It uh, is, you know, it's all about quality. It's mm -hmm. all about quality. Some people are saying that SEO now stands for search experience optimization. What do they mean by search experience optimization is really uh, how useful is your content? How useful is your website? What kind of experience are people having on the site so that the engagement goes up? And those types of areas are something that I think that everybody should be looking into. Uh, it's not just about throwing up lots of links and putting up SEO content anymore. It's making sure that your site is actually useful and helpful. Also, it's not, uh, in the old days, uh, we used to talk about search engine optimization, simply being linking content and on-site changes. Now search engine optimization expanded a lot and it's, uh, it's about on-site and off-site content. It's about, uh, your footprint across the internet and so we'll speak about that more I'm sure in uh, in other slides but let's talk about um, search engine optimization becoming 
more technical and uh, you know what does this mean I mean I know a lot of the the uh, the, the people that have tuned in today to listen to this presentation are not very technical but mm-hmm. what is that what does it mean uh, that SEO is becoming more technical well because Google and Bing as well let's not forget Bing is um, they're better able to sort of read your website and how uh, people are using it and how they can navigate it and find uh, information that's relevant to them as a result your site needs to become more technically proficient and you know this goes far beyond meta content which has been sort of the old standby in SEO you know now it's about how it's structured you know where is content being placed how easy it is it to navigate the site and to convert you know where's the blog where are these top level product pages you know what how is a site performing you know what's the what is the time on site what's the bounce rate you know how are images being optimized and you know um, search bars being optimized on your site calls to action things like this uh, page speed is huge. We find we're finding this to be increasingly a bigger ranking factor in uh, how quickly the sites load, and so people can you know find what they're looking for. Um, rich snippets is another great example. Rich snippets um, is an example of meta description, which is when you you know type into Google and you search something, it pulls up information from your website that the searcher can see without clicking through yet. So if you have a, an event upcoming, you're attending a, a conference or you have a special deal for the holidays or promotions. Um, these are things that are a star rating for different products. These are things that are going to appear. So there's all the ways you can optimize for the search experience that Bernard's talking about is um, it's heavily through this sort of technical optimization that we're seeing. And uh, so one of the things just to, to add to that that we're doing at National Positions and we've done, uh, we started this um, soon after the major algorithm changes that occurred in April, May is to start really looking at this, at uh, errors on on people's websites and to consistently look at errors because they get introduced over time. So you're looking at hosting errors, you're looking at broken pages, you're looking at load time, you're looking at all these issues that used to be something that the Google algorithm used to overlook, but now it's putting a lot of emphasis on this. Um, I think rich snippets, as you um, spoke about, for instance, if you have events, or you have an author who's writing content on your website, or you have ratings or, or, uh, for certain products, say your e-commerce site, and you, you're rating certain products, you can render all of those results out on the search engines. And so Google's gonna give you better rankings if your site works better. So mm-hmm. that's bottom, bottom line. Um, you need to have the tools to be able to look at that. And I think that's one of the things that we're gonna be providing to our clients on an ongoing basis uh, this year. So what does that mean to SEO becoming more expensive? Of course, as it becomes more complex, as it becomes, uh, as, as search engine optimization becomes more uh, expansive and it's not just on your website, well, it means that it's going to become more expensive because you have to do more uh, and uh, it's going to become harder to get those results. That's why conversion is so important. We'll be talking about that. Uh, later on in this presentation. So um, maybe you can explain what a long tail keyword is Mm -hmm. and why you believe that kind of concept is going to become more uh, imperative in 2013. Yeah, well, as you said, SEO is more expensive. So meaning that the traffic you're driving, it's costing more to drive that traffic. So there's a premium on the traffic you're driving. You want to drive traffic that converts, that really impacts your bottom line. And it's something that we are, we're proud that we, we really focus on is you know, a lot of the times clients will come on board and they'll want a vanity keyword. And it may well look good and it has a, a certain uh, pizzazz and a brand, uh, uh, branding quality to it, but it's not going to drive ROI with the cost of what it's going to take and how people are actually converting. So this, this concept of long tail keyword, which is like very internet uh, marketing kind of term, long tail. So finding specific audiences, so a certain product, and really sort of going into that second level where you're optimizing for keywords that people are, are searching for and then they're likely to buy and to convert. It's a high, higher conversion rate. So by you know, optimizing for, for long tail, what you're really doing is you're optimizing your ROI. You know, you're, you're, you're making sure that you're getting the most out of your SEO campaign by yeah. doing that. And maybe another way to put it is, it doesn't matter, in the past, say for instance, you were a jewelry website and you were going off to diamond ring or, or uh, engagement ring or wedding ring, things like that. If you're looking for, um, that was you know, two, a two word keyword, it doesn't matter if you're getting something like uh, 
you know, three, four, five uh, word keyword. Those are the long tail. Um, it, it's all about getting lots of traffic to your website. In fact, the longer the keyword is, maybe it would be um, wedding rings, cheap wedding rings in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to be very specific if you are a jewelry store that's based in Los Angeles. So those are the ones that are very specific types of keywords. They're not a lot of volume, but all together they add a lot of volume. And those are the ones that um, are going to be the ones that, that, that really we should be pursuing. It's looking at the aggregate and not just looking at going after the marquee keywords that are so difficult to, to get to the top of the search engines. So moving on... Um, SEO becomes internet marketing. I think this is one of our big predictions for the year and that it's not just about your website as we mentioned, it's about creating content and promoting that content throughout the web. Uh, we already started working on this type of concept over uh, 2012, introducing uh, Squidoo and Tumblr and Posturus and various other websites where we would place content and links back from that content. Um, guest blogging is going to become really important. Uh, getting your presence out there in many, many different areas like on YouTube and, and slide presentations and, and uh, podcasts and image uh, promotion, that type of thing. It's all about getting the word out there and getting this internet footprint. So I think one of the big uh, takeaways is you know get your internet footprint uh, out there because if you want to uh, be seen as a player, you can't only focus on your own website, you need to focus on the web. Mm -hmm. uh, and so social is going to become important as well, uh, just because without those factors, you're not going to rank. Yeah. You, need to, you, need to, mm -hmm. you need that broader uh, view of the web to rank. Yeah. And when we talk about SEO, and it's, it's expensive and it's, it's complicated, well, the, the benefit of that is when you're doing SEO, what you, you are doing is you're creating this organic value, this internet marketing presence. So by generating top rankings, you know, indirectly, it's, it's this sort of ripple effect that impacts everything else you do. It's going to impact your, your social media. It's going impact, to impact your branding, your conversion, your customer retention, engagement. So you know, we're not looking at this in just buckets anymore. SEO really is a foundation for your entire online experience and your online business. Uh, link generation. Cool. Everybody asks about linking. Um, where do you see linking going in 2013? How's it going to be different from 2012? Uh, well, this is uh, something we definitely have seen from the Penguin updates. Um, link diversification and link outreach and offsite content generating links. These are really the, the, the sort of the new waves that are happening in SEO. And these are really the new ways to generate quality backlinks that are going to drive rankings and traffic. Um, so an example would be a coupon distribution, generating coupons or a classified ad, or if you're a local business, you know, profiles on the top local directories and citations. You know, there's uh, events. You, you talked about events. That's a great example. So, you know, to sort of break it down in a non-technical way, you know, link diversification. You're creating links in a variety of ways on a variety of types of websites. So maybe a slide share, you know, we'll finish this presentation and we'll distribute it to the top uh, you know, document sharing and slideshow presentation sites and put this video, we're recording this, we'll put this video up on YouTube and Vimeo and it's going to show Google that we have this organic presence in a variety of ways and that diversifies our link profile and really expands this footprint from an SEO standpoint and it's, it really helps with your rankings. Some of the other trends I see on link generation um, are that the hard to get links obviously the ones are going to uh, be most sought after. One of the big trends is giving away something for a link. Like for instance, becoming guest blogger. You go out and you become a guest, uh, you, you exchange a really great article on a very, very strong blog website to get some strong, strong backlinks. These are things that the Google algorithm is really looking for. They want to see, they don't want to see the contrived links Although we know the contrived links really work, the obvious links are going to become um, ignored more. And so you really need to diversify out your linking strategy. I think that uh, one of my, my projections is that the three-way linking is actually going to come back hmm. into vogue. And what three-way linking is, is when you go out to um, another site and offer a link from one of your websites 
for a link on a third uh, website. So basically what you're doing is you, you're, uh, you're taking away the traceability for the Google algorithm to see where the, the link re originated. Uh, this is something we used to do years ago and I, I think it's going to come back into vogue uh, because it's very hard to, to unravel. But link diversification is the big story of 2013. You cannot have your link profile, uh, and I think this is actually the story, part, partly the story of 2012 as well. Make sure that you diversify your title tags uh, on your anchor text on, sorry, your anchor text on your, on your links. Uh, make sure that your, your linking looks natural and it's coming from lots of different places. And, um, and don't overdo any one type of linking. Yeah. That's, that is the key takeaway because, you know, optimization, we are in a way trying to push the search engines in a certain direction, but you don't want to overdo anything. And um, everybody learned that the hard way in, in 2012. And so it's all about looking natural, being diversified. So um, we want to make this really practical and we want to do takeaways here. Um, keep up with uh, the more complex search algorithms. There are uh, major algorithms that pretty much are coming out every month. Um, and and uh, we'll be putting that information out on our blog. So one of the things that you could do is just keep up with the, the National Positions blog. As soon as we see an algorithm update, we'll be announcing that. Um, look at the technical aspect of your website. Fix up any problems that you have on your website. Look at the structure. Um, canonicals, this is a term that's used where you have very similar pages. For instance, say you're selling uh, a shirt, um, your clothing site, and you have various colors and sizes. You want to make sure that Google only sees one of those pages. And that's what uh, fixing up canonical issues. Duplicate content, make sure people haven't uh, copied your content or when your writers haven't uh, plagiarized content from somewhere else. You want to make sure that your content is is uh, unique and personalized so that you can engage people, make uh, your site very, very practical, and and also uh, increase the size of your footprint. We are going to be incre introducing 20 new linking products over the next week. Uh, these products include things like couponing, classifieds, video st distribution, image distribution. Um, this is something that can help you very much diversify your linking strategy in 2013. Uh, for those of you that are national positions clients, you know, please speak to your customer service uh, representative about this, or they'll be speaking to you about it, uh, because obviously our goal is to make you look natural and to make your SEO campaign hugely successful this year. So moving on now um, to content and social, we've kind of put them together, content marketing. Is, is the big buzz uh, in uh, 2013. Everybody's talking about distributing content. Uh, when I look at some of the research out there, and again, there's so, many re there's so much research and there's so many people contradicting and research, but it looks like marketing managers say that they are going to increase their spend on social by 51%. That's across all marketing managers, and this came from a, a research uh, that was conducted uh, recently by Strongmail. Um, so let's jump right into social and have a look at uh, what, what do you, when it comes to content, what's this whole story about value exchange? Uh, well, when you're looking to, to get content, really there's a stickiness to it. You want to provide content that people are, on, are going to find valuable on your own site, but also off site, bringing traffic back to your site, bringing backlinks back to your site. Content is really the linchpin for, you know, linking and social and all this engagement that you're really looking to drive. And in order to drive that, you, it's, it's sort of this old advertising concept, right? Customer persona. Well, what are people looking for? What are, what are your customers looking for? They're looking for a valuable content, information that you as an you know, industry expert can provide. So sometimes it's good to sort of step back and think, you know, what are the kinds of questions, the FAQs you're getting regularly from customers who shop from you? Or you will, if you're a lawyer, provide, a, you know, you can on your blog or guest blogging, provide sort of a top 10 legal tips uh, once a month or every couple of months. There's so many things you can do to leverage your expertise to, uh, to provide guest blog, to provide a content and a value exchange where you're going and posting content on other sites and bringing people back. So one, a guest blogging is one type of value exchange. A coupon is another, right? The value is there's a special deal for maybe 20% off or a classified ad. 
Um, you know, this webinar is an example of that, or a video where you're promoting certain concepts. So always, you know, think about how you can provide this value to users that are then, you know, what's in it for them. They're, that This is information they find valuable and it generates a backlink and brings people back to your website. A couple of other takeaways I think as well. Um, very practical. Look at the content on your website and try and become a niche player. Mm -hmm. The algorithm is becoming smarter, the algorithm is becoming more sophisticated. Um, if someone, you brought up an example of a law firm, let's just say you're in Boise, Idaho, and you're a DUI attorney, write about Idaho, write about your specific market in Boise, write about DUI and how to get off, uh, you know, something will be useful, how do I get off, uh, you know, if I'm found under the influence of alcohol, whatever it is. Um, find something that's really useful, really helpful. The other idea here is, is, is this old offline idea. You hire a PR agency, you take a story and you pitch it. Well, take that concept and bring it online. You take, you write great content. So this is something we're going to be doing for our clients. You write great content and you pitch it to great websites out there. So you find um, leading websites, leading blog sites, and you pitch the content and in exchange for, for a great story, the, the uh, blog site will take a signature, add your signature, which is a link back to your website. And those are the kinds of things you're gonna see more and more. And this is something that Google really likes. They want quality content to be added to the web. They want the value of the web to improve. And so expect more of that. So the takeaway, uh, become more of a niche player, uh, produce great content, engaging content, um, pitch the content around the web so that you become an authority. And, and, and then also the interoperability of content. If you put out a press release, well the press release should be on your social media sites. If you have a social media engagement, it should also be um, advertised or, or um, included on press releases and other promotional uh, promotional parts of your overall uh, internet footprint. And I guess that takes us yeah. <laughs> straight into this whole idea of integrating multimedia. Um, so uh, maybe you could talk more about that. Alan. Yeah, um, I mean mobile is a great example of this. Mobile is sort of mobile search has surpassed desktop, which we'll talk a little bit about. Uh, so it's brought video to the forefront. Um, you know, uh, Pinterest, infographics, Instagram, visualization. We're living in a visual age, uh, like it or not. I know a lot of uh, people sort of, they still like to sort of read the newspaper, but for the most part, the internet is about creating dynamic, engaging content that can be easily consumed and, you know, uh, conveying a message as, you know, interestingly as possible very, very quickly. So try to incorporate this multimedia into your content, into your SEO strategy, video SEO, infographics, um, you know, image image distribution, image optimization. This is all really, really important to your overall campaign. One, it's it provides new distribution channels for maybe linking or or custom or uh, customers. But it, it also just it engages users, which is really at the end of the day, if you can do something that's going to convert better, you should be looking at doing that. And one of the things is when you're thinking about mobile. Um, People are not prepared to sit there on their iPhone or their Android device and read a lot of content. Even though the content is important and you need it for the crawlers on the desktop, you need to have videos that people can, can watch and people are lazy, they don't want to read anymore and that's why a picture's worth a thousand words and it's really important to, to think about your content strategy, not just text anymore mm -hmm. yeah. and for everything to work together and to have uh, a content calendar and uh, you know building out your blog and building out your video and your audio and your images is something that I would really recommend that everybody do in uh, 2013. So let's talk about um, social signals and and you know social is something that's been uh, Despite what everybody says, and I, and I read out here, the people that uh, marketing managers are expected to spend, and you know, fifty-one percent of them say they're going to spend more on social media this year. But is social media really generating an ROI for clients? I mean, what are we seeing at National Positions, Adam? 
Uh, the truth is we're not seeing, for, for some clients, it depends what industry they're in. You know, um, some clients, they're, uh, they're in tourism or hospitality. Well, social media is a wonderful channel for them because they can promote deals and it's, it's very social, social friendly activity. But, you know, for if you're a lawyer or a dentist, for instance, you know, or if you're a professional, it's not the most, uh, it's not the, the it's, you're not best suited for that. Um, now, SEO, SEO is impacted by these social signals. So a lot of the times what we're looking at is maybe segmenting it as social media, not looking at it overall. Saying, well, if you're a dentist, you know, Google Plus is really important because Google Plus integrates with Google local search. And you know you're playing in Google Sandbox. So if you're a local merchant, have a, have use Google Plus, and it's going to boost your local SEO campaign. Um, if you're an e-commerce site, maybe Pinterest is better. Um, you know, like I said, if you're in tourism, hospitality, Facebook, Twitter, those are really great for promoting deals in a timely way. So you know, if you sort of look at social media as this huge thing, um, you can kind of lose perspective and. Be, you know, th sort of investing in things that might not deliver ROI. So really target your campaign specifically so you're making sure that you're doing things that are impacting your SEO, they're impacting your, your ROI in a positive way. So I think the takeaway from what you're saying then is be very strategic. Mm -hmm. You have to do social because social is going to help your rankings. You have to do Google Plus, unfortunately, whether you like it or not, because if you want to do well on Google, you got to have a presence, especially if you've got a local business, because Google integrated Google Plus and local into Google Plus local. So you're stuck. You need to have a Google Plus presence. Um, but if you're a professional services company, make sure you've got LinkedIn. Be strategic yeah. about mm -hmm. where you're going. Don't go uh, broad, but be strategic. So if you're professional services, uh, like we said, LinkedIn, um, Facebook more for B2C mm -hmm. type of uh, engagement. I mean, Twitter absolutely is, is, has its place, but don't get caught up on plus ones and likes and followers. It's all about engagement. That means you've got to be really strategic this year in having campaigns that are going to get people to come back. Yeah. Um, I think that, that a lot of people were disappointed that they weren't getting an ROI uh, from social. And, and a lot of it has to be, we have to be really good about having campaigns that are going to get people excited about your social and be strategic don't go everywhere you don't have to be on Pinterest everyone you don't have to be on Facebook and Twitter yeah, but you need to but some but focus on certain areas and work hard on those in 2013 and unfortunately you do need to have some social presence um, it just that's how you're gonna get your rankings as well and it's not gonna be a major major indicator in 2013 I think it's more like 2014 where we're gonna see that social is going to have a major impact. But social is going to become more important. And then social is also, you talked about, you know, we talk about engagement. Well, how do you know that someone's engaged? Well, I'm going to use a bit of a conspiracy theory now, but I believe that it's probably it has a lot of truth in it. Google Analytics, I think Google is going to start looking at how much time on page, uh, you know, what kind of bounce rates are happening throughout your website. And then they're also going to look at social factors, which I think you should build into your website all the way through. You know, people should be able to like a page or people should be able to tweet a page or repin a page. And so I, if I were um, out there building my site today, I'd put a lot of social uh, features in it because you're building that out for the latter part of 2013, 2014. Um, yeah, well, we spoke, spoke about vanity metrics. Um, a lot of people got caught up in this, very excited. Oh, I've got 2,000 followers. You know, what does that mean if they're not going to buy anything from you or if they only come to your Facebook page once in a while? We really, it's more important to have less followers, but people that are really engaged. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the takeaway on that one. Um, okay, so here are the practical points and the takeaways for content. Value exchange. We need to build out really good content and pitch it to great websites around the web. We need to build out great quality content on our website that's useful. Go back to your website and work out whether you've got good content out there or whether uh, you've got content that's mediocre. Start looking at your competition as well and see what they're doing. 
find a niche. Be very, very strategic about finding your specific area. The web is so huge that you can find a niche that's going to work for you. Um, explore multimedia. Make sure that you've got all these different uh, aspects, images and videos and content, text content, and maybe audio if that makes sense to you as well. And make sure that your brand has a presence on social media and that you're very strategic about yeah. the way that you handle uh, social media. Do you have any other takeaways yeah. there? Yeah, and when we're talking about accomplishing your goals, work backwards from that. Work from what are you trying to do with your, with what are the goals, especially with social media, but content as well. What are your goals? Is it from an SEO standpoint? Is it retention? Um, which, what kind of websites, what kind of blogs are you trying to get um, publicity on? Um, and work from that point, and then you know, you're, you're from a consulting standpoint, we can help you, you know, figure out okay, how are we going to achieve those goals? Great. And, and one other area that I didn't emphasize is that content is probably one of the top areas that you should be focusing on this year. Um, national positions just in 2012 added, we added 30 new uh, members of our team just focused on content. We absolutely see that growing more and more and growing out our social team growing out our content uh, team. With all our new linking strategies, we're gonna have more and more need for content. Content is, is gonna be yeah. a, a big factor in uh, 2013. And that really is what the message was that Google came out with. Panda is all about quality, and, um, and that's what I, that was what we've been talking about. So let's talk about um, paid advertising. And um, so paid, well, uh, let's talk about why it's, you know, it, this is the trend. It just keeps getting more and more expensive. And I think what we're trying to do is figure out how to make our paid advertising work. So what do you suggest? Yeah, I mean, a lot of, the, a lot of people who come to SEO or come to different uh, come, clients who come on board, they've been burned on AdWords um, because you know, Google is an advertising company as well. I mean, they make 97% of their money through AdWords. And, you know, they don't do it by optimizing for your conversions. They do it by optimizing for clicks, by getting you to, cl for, for get, by getting you to spend as much as possible. So we see a lot, of, a lot of clients who, quite frankly, are getting really badly burned by their AdWords campaign. So, um, and because it's so getting so expensive, and it's just going in that direction. It's imp it's important to diversify your campaigns if you're going to do PPC. You know, on AdWords, really long tail, as we're talking about, is an important important strategy. You know, trying to d split test text ads versus display ads, see which are conversion. Always bring it back to Google Analytics and your conversion rates, and how are people going through your sales funnel. You know, don't get caught up with I got this many clicks and this many impressions. If it's not driving ROI. Then it's you know it's not it's not helping. Um, you know, uh, as we look further into segmenting paid, uh, e-commerce, local, mobile, these become much more important and yeah. probably better ways to pursue paid paid traffic um, for e-commerce product listing ads and Amazon and Google Shopping, Shopzilla, Nextag. These these e-commerce channels we've sort of got displayed here on the slide. That becomes maybe a much better route to get cheaper clicks that are going to convert if you're selling products, direct, brand, especially branded products, directly on your site. So I think one of the takeaways is that you need to spend time figuring out other avenues mm -hmm. to place your paid advertising on. If you're doing paid advertising, look for other uh, avenues besides Google uh, Pay Per Click, um, whether it's comparison shopping engines or marketplaces. Um, if you're an e-commerce site, you know, a lot of these areas from Amazon to Shopzilla might be really good opportunities. Mobile advertising still, if you are doing PPC, is still a better opportunity today than, than display advertising on uh, a regular uh, traditional computers. Mm -hmm. So um, we gotta look for the avenues, we gotta look for the, uh, the aspects of, of pay they're gonna work. And so that's what I see. Google is gonna be fighting, I, I think they're making, uh, Every, they're trying to monetize every single inch of uh, space on their search results and they're making organic more and more difficult by changing the algorithms all the time. Um, people are getting a little fed up uh, also at how difficult it is and how competitive it is uh, to make money on paid. So we have to just be really smart this year. 
So that comes up to retargeting. So what is retargeting? Basically, this is where uh, you place cookies on on uh, the visitor's website, and they see your web, uh, ad, whether it's a banner ad or a tile, um, over and over as they go to other websites. So you've probably seen this. It's a little uh, weird, uh, but you go to a, a particular site, and then you keep seeing that site show up over and over. But if you think about it, that's what... Um, Advertising is all about, it's about number of impressions and the more times people see your brand over and over, the more likely they are to purchase. So this is something that uh, we've been uh, offering in 2012. I, I see a lot of people, uh, it's, it's fairly inexpensive and uh, it just makes, it makes that paid, uh, that click more worthwhile. So someone comes to your website and they disappear and in most cases, people have a conversion rate of anywhere between one and five percent. Uh, so ninety-five percent of people, at least, are disappearing. How about retargeting them uh, so that over and over they get these impressions, and then they come back to your website again? So um, this is another thing that you probably have seen, and it's an area that we're going to start offering. Uh, again, in fact, we started offering this a couple of years ago and it was ahead of its time. But it's all about these really um, attention grabbing ads. So if you go onto Yahoo as an example and you move your cursor over an ad, it kind of takes up the whole space, um, or uh, it's a dynamic ad that slides down, or if you go to a clothing site, you can do a 360 where you where you turn a model turns and you can see the sweater from all angles. Those types of rich media are, are something that are really going to come to the foray in, in 2013. And the reason again is because getting people to your website is more expensive, it's more competitive, so you've got to do something that's going to grab them when they get to your site. And uh, so I see a lot of that happening and uh, this is something that I think is going to really improve conversion rates and expect to look at that. That's something um, we talk, uh, we have a name for that at National Position called our Sales Multiplier product, and uh, we'll be relaunching that uh, later on um, this quarter. So uh, maybe you want to go through the PPC takeaways, Adam. Yeah, um, as we're talking about, diversify your campaign. Um, you know, don't optimize AdWords for clicks, optimize for conversions, and really segment. Look, at, think about long tail. That's really important. So if you're e-commerce, Try to find the, the shopping channels and marketplaces that are going to deliver ROI as, a, as easily as possible. And the same thing if you're on the mo local or mobile uh, market. Um, as Bernard was talking about, dynamic ads with visualization, display ads, rich media. Um, we live in it like we were talking about. Visualization is key. And especially when you're, you're, try you're fighting for clicks and you're fighting for conversions, uh, this becomes a, a, it's a premium. And finally, retargeting is just a great way to maximize the traffic you're paying for. So let's go look um, at Molo, uh, mobile and local. This is probably the biggest story in, uh, in 2013. I mean, it was a big story in 2012, but uh, in uh, the fourth quarter of 2012 in the United States, there were more mobile devices being used to search the web than traditional, traditional uh, desktops. And uh, so, you know, if you don't have a mobile presence, you're you're in, not in a, in a great place. It looks like from the research I see here, 42.8% of marketing managers saying that they're gonna put more money into mobile. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about mobile and local, and obviously there's been an explosion in the mobile market. Um, it gives you a great opportunity. People are, people are more apt to wanna to buy when they're on mobile devices, and we are projecting that, and this has been done pretty badly at this point, is that e-commerce is going to improve significantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually be able to much more easily buy off your mobile phone. So our team is actually working on that right now. Uh, we do have a partnership um, with a company who will allow you to take your, if your e-commerce site to render the results uh, very nicely on a mobile device. And the, of course you've got targeting, you've got click to call, all these factors are just going to explode and continue to become important in uh, in uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. So local and mobile, they they're going to be talked about as one thing, this Molo, 
Um, tell us more about this. Yeah, um, well, Google Maps is a great example. I, I'm, I'm a big believer that the Google Maps, uh, like iPhone and the Android app, has been revolutionary for local local marketing for local businesses. Um, mo- a lot of us, when we are searching for, you know, the local results, we're doing it on our mobile phone. We're doing it in the maps. Uh, we're doing it in those local search results. Um, and when we're because when we're on the go and moving around and looking for things mobily, it's usually in the area like it's in a it's it, there's it's very time sensitive and it's very hyper locally targeted. So we need to think of these as like one thing, and that's MOLO is sort of a cute term for it. Um, and you know, right now, you look at the, the biggest technology companies in the world, Apple, Facebook, and Google. They're all firmly planting their flag in this mobile local market. Right. So what is that, you know, as marketers, we need to take a look at that and stop and think, there's a lot of money in that. And you know, if you can optimize for the local search with a mobile website, and like Bernard was saying, click to call and click to uh, click to map. Um, you can really drive traffic that is super like very likely to convert because these are people that are looking for something, and you're getting them at the sort of this what they call the zero moment of truth, right when they're looking to buy at that time in that place. And if you can put yourself in that channel, um, I mean, it can really just change a business. I think that uh, as you said. With Apple in the market, uh, with the, the iPhone, their relationship with Yelp uh, mm-hmm. this year, um, with Facebook jumping into this because they know that uh, the, the monetization is really important. With Yellow Page, is pretty much dead. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have to be, if you're a local business, you have to be showing up in that six pack uh, mm-hmm. on the top of Google, mm-hmm. basically the Google uh, local results. And so a lot of work should be done on, on having a local campaign that's successful. Reviews, uh, we, we launched our national reviews uh, program last year. It's taken off really well. Trying to help uh, companies to, to uh, request reviews and get good reviews because as you know, the worst thing is to actually get a presence but they have very bad star ratings. Yeah, I mean, Google has Google. As Bernard was saying, has Google Plus Local, and they bought Zagat and integrated yeah. Zagat into it. So reviews, this whole reviews, local, mobile, like space, it's all this one really big thing that you really need to focus on in 2013. So I guess the big thing, the uh, one of the takeaways here, you need a mobile uh, website. If you don't have one, we have a a free mobile wizard that builds out a simple mobile website for you. If your e-commerce site and your e-commerce program doesn't render very well, uh, maybe we can help you with that as well. If you need to get reviews and you need help with that, that's something else that, that potentially we can help you with. And you really need to get distributed throughout all these different directories and make sure that uh, when someone types you in, if you're a local business, that you show up. Um, so yeah, we spoke about all these things. Google Plus, well, Google Plus is uh, now so hooked into local. Is Google Plus local? You need to have Google Plus, whether you like it or not. If you don't, uh, this is the time to really build up your Google Plus. And it's almost, you feel like you're over a barrel, don't you? I mean, Google's forced you yeah. into social. And this was one of the uh, projections that we made at the beginning of 2012. We said you need to be in Google Plus because Google owns Google Plus. Well, they made it even more so in 2013. Um, and uh, also, you know, these, um, these uh, Foursquare and and uh, these check-in sites, depending on what kind of business you've got, uh, checking in might be something that you really want to be in. So mm-hmm. that's uh, another area that, that we offer. Um, conversion. So traffic's becoming more and more expensive. So uh, let's talk about conversion optimization a little bit. Yeah, I, as Bernard was saying, traffic's more expensive. So what are you doing with that traffic? Are you converting it? Are you making the most out of... You're, we're spending so much time in driving traffic to your site and getting people there. It would be a shame to you know go 90% of the way and lose lose them because our website isn't as well designed and optimized for conversion as possible. So you know this has been building for a couple of years, but it's just it's getting really big now. Web design and analytics tracking are crucial to your online success because you know traffic is not as easy to come by anymore. So you need to you need to really design a website that is optimized for this user experience. So, you know, here's a, on the slide we have an example of a, a really, 
you know, a really nice uh, uh, contact form to sign up, and it's got uh, trust factors at the bottom. And you know, we have our conversion team specializes in creating these landing pages that implement all these conversion incentives with risk reversals and you know, uh, and sales incentives and all these sort of confidence builders, testimonials. There, there's so much more than just maybe designing the site as you think is really nice because as we know, it's very artistic. It's a subjective art form, really. What really what we're really focused on is how is that design, website design practically being used to make you sales? And that's really the focal point. And from then, you need to track that in Google Analytics to see how people are moving through the sales cycle and what can you do to you know, increase your conversion rate from, if you can increase, increase your conversion rate from one to 2%, it doesn't sound like a whole lot, but you're effectively doubling your business by doing Doubling your business at the same cost yeah, the in same advertising. Cost. Yeah. One of the takeaways, and I would love everybody to do this, is just jump into your analytics program today. Mm -hmm. Don't waste another moment <laughs> on it. And have a look for the pages that are the most traffic pages and look at your bounce rate. If you've got a bounce rate that's over 30%, you need to act on that because you're wasting a lot of opportunity here. Um, so 30%, you know, maybe people are going to look, look at it and say, well, that's still high. But I can tell you a lot of people have got bounce rates, 40, 50, 60% of the people that are coming are just coming to that page and disappearing off that page. And this is an action that could immediately help you. Um, from a national position standpoint, we're expanding out that team, uh, conversion team. We have kind of like a best practices where we can just quickly look at a page and correct the problems because we've done so many of these conversion programs. Or of course, we can do multivariate and split testing uh, to help you if you're at all interested in it or do it yourself. Um, Google Analytics has now got the content experiments built into it. And so you can have some really uh, good opportunities here to test out new pages. And this is something that you should be doing on a consistent basis. Email marketing. Well, of course, this, uh, this survey that I have in front of me uh, came from Strongmail. So of course, they tell us that email marketing is going to be an area that marketing managers are going to spend uh, a lot more money on this year. And I, I think that they're absolutely right. Email is, is something that if handled right, uh, can generate an incredible ROI and uh, email lead nurturing and email management uh, from people that already bought from you or have interacted with you is something that is, is gonna be huge. Um, yeah, we consider this a conversion tactic again because um, you know, you're driving traffic and people buy from you. Um, are you retaining that customer? Are you in, you know, what's the lifetime value of a, of a client to you? If you can have repeat business or retain that customer, say if you're a dentist or an e-commerce site, get them to buy multiple products. Um, you've already spent all this, all this time and all these resources acquiring them. It's really easy to uh, you know, target email campaigns with the right message. So the, real, the focus also in, in sort of 2013 is how can you get away from maybe spamming people, segmenting your email list so depending on what they bought or what part of the country they're in, yeah. emailing them with the right message is, is really key. And so uh, it's all about the lifetime value mm -hmm. of your client and, and reaching out to them and not just thinking about the web itself. The web is just, your website is just one of many, many of the traffic generation programs. And uh, so I would uh, definitely look into what you're doing today with email and how you're segmenting your email uh, list right now. Um, well, we gave you a, go, a, a takeaway. Use Google Analytics to identify uh, the weakest pages on your website with a lot of bounce rate, implement some conversion tracking, create uh, regular email campaigns targeted and segment your list. Um, reputation management. I know we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to go through this rather quickly, but it's pretty uh, self-evident, I would say that reputation can be so easily affected by some crazy disgruntled uh, ex-employee or client who just had a bad experience. We have to be so careful on the web today. It's really important to build out your brand and to protect your brand. So how do you do it? You create other, um, other websites that can protect your brand. So you buy other 
Um, you created other mini sites with your brand in, 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 included in it. You have your social media out there, which is also a way that uh, you can promote these other websites, these other entities that you have so you can block negative, negative brands. Be proactive about your reputation this year. And uh, a lot of people uh, decide they want to um, enlist national positions or other companies to work on their reputation after they have a problem. Be proactive and work on it before you have a problem because the sooner you can build out all of these other entities, so if someone types in your brand name and you've got, you've got the whole of the 10 listings or even in, in, if you've done your branding right, there are actually seven listings for your brand. If they all include your brand name, it's great and it's gonna be really hard for someone to tarnish your name. So um, that's uh, the reputation. Invest in protecting your brand. Monitor your online reputation so that you know what's going on. Uh, we can help you with that. And focus on improving your online reviews. We spoke about that as well, uh, especially if you're a local company or if you um, have some kind of reviews associated with your business, which most people do. So jumping into the action plan, what's the action plan uh, for 2013, Adam, that you're recommending? Well, we've, we've, talked, we've touched on a lot of uh, topics here. We want to, like, as you said, make it as practical as possible because we know everyone's busy and what can they do that's going to generate ROI. So start by, with your SEO campaign, um, you know, uh, as well as optimizing your on-site content. That's first and foremost. But once you've done that, really look at how you can diversify your linking and strengthen your linking with this off-site content. Guest blog posts. You know, find uh, popular blogs in your industry or in your 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 geographical region that you can post to. Um, are you? Can you do coupons? Can you do videos? Can you do classified ads or events um, and promote them on various websites? This is really um, we really see this as a future of SEO. And the sooner you can start to do this, uh, the better your rankings are going to be. Um, you know, with that comes uh, a link diversification and a stronger distribution uh, service. And uh, so. Just really look into that, and as, like, as Bernard says, we're we're actually launching like a whole uh, li, li, uh, menu of new linking products that are going to help with that. Um, look into how you can uh, optimize for mobile and local. So create that Google local search uh, account. Really optimize the business page. Um, start optimizing local search if you're in a local market, like a dentist or a, a pediatrician. Um, create a mobile website because the fact is. A lot of people are gonna are gonna click through, and you don't want them clicking through to a clunky website that doesn't help, that doesn't look right on an iPhone or Android. Um, if you're gonna do social media, figure out which channel is right for you. Is it LinkedIn? Is it Twitter? Is it Facebook? Establish your goals first, and then look into how you can you can fulfill that, rather than just getting caught up with I got a post and I need fans. You're doing PPC segmented, so. Start from this standpoint. Are you are you an e-commerce or are you a, a e-commerce site or maybe a local merchant or lead gen site? Based on that, there's a whole there's a whole strategy that you need to implement to optimize for those long tail conversions. And we have our own PPC team who you know we'd be happy they'd be happy to talk to you and give you a free audit. They do a free audit on PPC. So if you're unhappy with or the results or it hasn't been to your, your your satisfaction, we can look really go in your analytics and see what we can do to improve. And we do that free of charge. Um, retargeting uh, during this uh, PPC audit, they can also talk to you about uh, retargeting and how that can help you improve your traffic. Um, and in addition, they're going to talk to you also about landing pages and you know, or your if you're an on SEO, the account manager will talk to you about uh, your tr your analytics and tell you about how you can uh, improve your ROI. And finally. Big picture, optimize for engagement, not just for search. Thanks, Adam. So a lot of takeaways, a lot of action items. We're on the Q&A part of the, the session, and I know we're two minutes uh, to the hour. I'm going to just have a look to see if there are um, any questions that people have uh, included, and then we'll try and answer that. Um, let's see what we have here. Um, okay, so someone was asking, will NP be offering website structure optimization? And the answer is yes. That is included in our campaigns. And we're going to be doing this on an ongoing basis, not just at the beginning of the campaign, but ongoing throughout uh, the campaign. 
we're going to be looking at your traffic and consistently looking every time there's an algorithm change did it have an effect we're going to be running uh, various technical analysis reports and fixing problems as part of your ongoing maintenance with national positions um, um, another question here I'd like to ask uh, is it worth it having a presence on many of the social network accounts um, or to focus on the popular media maybe um, you know so I guess you I guess another way of putting this is uh, we got a limited budget where do you put this budget is it in content syndication or is it in social would I would say? start with content and offsite content because this has this accomplishes two goals first and foremost it's quality link building and it's going to generate uh, search engine rankings and traffic, which we know, study after study has shown that SEO traffic is the most valuable. It converts the highest rate. And more people are searching Google to find products and services they need than Facebook, where they're looking to engage with friends. So if I was looking, you know, to priorities, I would start with this off-site content creation and promotion, and then, you know, and then maybe look into social media. Also, you know, if you're doing guest blogging, that has the the added component of branding and organic traffic and you know social engagement anyway so you know social media I would really look at as you know f build the foundation of an SEO campaign and then move into how you can distribute it better with social great um, what are your thoughts on Instagram as a social media avenue you know it, Instagram's great I use Instagram but I've never used it from a utility utility standpoint and um, right now it only exists sort of in a mobile app format. Um, obviously it's been bought by Facebook maybe in a year or so. I mean never say never because things are moving so quickly. But as of right now I don't really we don't really see Instagram as like a, a profitable channel for, for marketing. I think it's interesting. I'm more bullish than you are on Instagram. Um, I like also the idea of image marketing, especially if you're an e e-commerce um, e-commerce client where you've got lots of images of lots of products and these show up in the universal search results and also I think if you if you've got a business that is um, very image image oriented Instagram could be good but as you said it's like how do we leverage it so uh, I think one of the things is we don't have a product for it right now but we definitely are looking at products like Instagram I mean it, Instagram is so popular and so um, I mean it's gone yeah more crazy. popular than Twitter right now actually. and Facebook uh, yeah. owns Instagram now and so it's 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 gonna be come bigger and bigger yeah um, um, let's see how do we see browsers blocking tracking cookies and affecting retargeting I I'm sure they uh, we're gonna continue especially in Europe I know we got uh, um, uh, we've got uh, people who came to the presentation from all over the world today uh, the privacy issues mm -hmm. in Europe I, I see potentially that happening in the United States as well um, it, it's a cat and mouse game yeah. and uh, so yep they are gonna be people that get that block the cookies but they're gonna become more sophisticated I mean this is like the big big data and big brother is sort of the big internet issue of, uh, of the time but as of right now I would have to say that big data is winning and Facebook and Google or Twitter, et cetera, Amazon, they're all looking to monetize their traffic and their popularity. So uh, right now I would err on the side of saying that it's much, tracking is much more powerful than, uh, it, than it isn't, and it's really moving in that direction. Um, is there any way to use retargeting without buying PPC? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. As long as people are coming to your site um, and it is a great add-on for uh, as a from an SEO standpoint. Um, we were sort of included in the PPC campaign because it's something usually done by a, with PPC campaigns. But uh, no, as if you are driving traffic to your site and you're trying to increase the, the lifetime value of of, of your traffic, uh, retargeting is a wonderful option. Yeah. So the the key is if you've got quite a lot of traffic, that I wouldn't yeah. consider retargeting unless you've got a lot of traffic. Um, but it doesn't. It it's, doesn't matter where the traffic came from, whether it's paid or it's organic. 
Um, okay, someone's asking whether we can send it to the team in South Africa. Absolutely. Um, your thoughts about Pinterest? Pinterest, um, it's it's similar to Instagram, but it actually I think is um, is better from a marketing standpoint. And we have a this is why we have a Pinterest program. Uh, if you're selling e-commerce, um, if you're selling branded products or any kind of products, actually. Pinterest is actually probably the best channel for you for social media. Um, it's actually um, the second most profitable social network right after Facebook, despite the fact that Facebook's much more popular. Um, it's because um, you know you're looking at it, you're looking at products and you're looking at visual, and people are clicking from those uh, boards, those image boards, to the websites. Yeah. So they're like mini landing pages, really. They're like mini ads. So I, I actually think from an e-commerce standpoint. Pinterest is maybe my favorite um, uh, social media channel. Right. In fact, people, uh, first of all, Pinterest is much more female oriented than male oriented. Yeah. The people, uh, the, the people buying from Pinterest is much higher than any other social media uh, site out there. Mm -hmm. And so if you have, as uh, Adam said, if you have something that is really visual uh, as a product offering, put it on Pinterest. Absolutely. One of the best avenues. Um, to to try and make some sales off of, and I like Pinterest a lot. I'm very bullish about where Pinterest is going in 2013. Um, when you see a lot of the the surveys, they don't talk about people putting money into Pinterest, and I think it's because a lot of the people surveyed are from bigger companies that are not as nimble and are not as ahead of the curve as others, um, but. I would absolutely be all over Pinterest, uh, especially if you've got a female-oriented uh, market. So you've got uh, and a woman's clothing or jewelry or you know many, many, many different products. Uh, you're going to see sales coming out of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, does National do retargeting? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. um, so please, uh, you know, uh, find out more. Yeah, you can. Uh, it says, who do you recommend? I would uh, talk to if you have uh, an SEO campaign. I would talk to your account manager. But also our PPC department, uh, our director of SEM, David Yeager, uh, he would be happy to, to provide a free audit and uh, provide advice on how to implement it. So uh, feel free to email David. I think it's david at nationalpositions.com. Yeah, I know David J. David J at nationalpositions.com. Um, what direction advertising-wise would you take for a professional services firm? Well, I'm really happy you asked that. And we, we've actually been sitting down and putting together um, suggested programs for professional services firms, local companies, uh, e-commerce companies. So professional service, uh, uh, if you've got white, there are a lot of questions that you ask. Do you have white papers? You know, distribution, distribute those to document sites. If you've got a great story, you've got really good information, guest blogging is really important. LinkedIn is an obvious for professional yeah. services. Um, you want to build out a network, you want to answer questions on LinkedIn, you want to build yourself up as an authority in 2013. Um, Presentations, videos, anything where professional service, uh, your personal brand, your corporate brand is really important. So off-site content is huge and it's a great way to build value exchange and to build your SEO campaign. You know, that would be phenomenal. So a lot of, a lot of opportunities out there for professional services. Uh, we're bringing out an events program as well. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of exciting things that, for professional services uh, firms that uh, we'll be launching uh, over the next few days. Mm -hmm. And local, you know, I mean, if you're a, a real, realtor or a stockbroker or a, you know, attorney, attorney or to, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You need to be in local. Mm -hmm. When people are putting in those terms, you have to show up. Um, so there's there's just so many opportunities. And so I think that brings to the end our Q&A and our, our uh, projections for 2013 and our takeaways. Uh, please tune in. We're going to be uh, having a number of webinars. The next one is actually going to be on our new linking strategy. So that'll be, um, we'll be having that this month, probably towards the end of this month. And uh, we look forward to the participation. And thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks, guys. Happy New Year.